In this project, I'm going to show you how to build an advanced table in React.js. I call it advanced because you will be able to perform all the CRUD functionalities, which is the create, read, update, and delete functionalities, as well as you can search through the table, basically giving it a filter functionality. And also there's a pagination functionality. So in this one project, you will learn how to implement CRUD, search filter, as well as pagination, all of them packed together and implemented on this table. So now just to show you all of that in action, I'll first give you the demo of the project. So here, let's say I start populating some data. So if I write John and I keep the gender as male and the age as 23, then after clicking add, you can see we get the first item added to the table. And here we also have an actions column, which has the edit and delete functionality. And here you can see, since this is the first page, we get a page number one over here. And it's highlighted as green because this page is active at the moment. Similarly, I'll populate some more names. I'll fast forward this part. As you can see, the add functionality works fine and items keep getting added one after the other. Now you'll notice once I've populated this table with five data, notice what happens when I add the next one. So after populating this, if I click on add, then you can see we get the page number two over here. So that means per page in the code, I have set up that we should only show five items per page. And if it exceeds that, then send the next data to the next page. So if I click on page two, we get to see the next data. All right. So the pagination here works fine as well. And when I click on page two, you can see two gets highlighted over here. Similarly, let me just add a few more. And now you can see with the data being populated as it is, let's now try to search for a particular name. So let's say I want to search for hello over here. So if I go to page one, or basically I stay on any page from page one here, if I search for hello, you can see we get hello displayed over here. So that means we are able to search properly as well. Similarly, I can search for John and we get John over here as well. All right. Now let's actually try to edit some data. So let's say I want to edit John. So what I can do is if I click on edit, then you can see the cursor comes up over here. The moment I click on edit, this part gets highlighted and the cursor comes up over here, indicating the user that this row is now editable. So I can update John over here. I can also update different columns update this and now once i'm done with my update if i click anywhere outside the table the edit gets saved all right so now if i click here again i can't edit this again until i click on the edit button again all right so the edit functionality also works fine and now apart from that i can also delete elements let's say i go to page two and i click on delete here then you see hello got deleted similarly i can delete this as well and you saw after i deleted the last item from page two we came back to the page one all right so the delete functionality works fine and now one more thing i need to show you is we also have the pagination functionality for the search filtered results and what i mean by that is let's say i add this same emily name five more times so in total it will be added six more times i'll fast forward that part i'll just add this a few more times all right so over here you can see i have added emily five times and here emily is there once in this page as well so in total we have emily coming up six times all right and now if i actually try to search for emily so you'll see the pagination updates over here it has two pages and it only shows the ones which have emily if i go to page two it has the last item as emily because we had six items in total and per page we're showing five items so the pagination also adapts itself and structure as for the search filter so if i empty the search filter from here then the pagination is still there for the entire data. So let's say I just add one more random data over here. Now we have three pages, right? So when we have nothing in the search filter, then the pagination works for the entire data set. All right, so page one, page two, page three. But let's say if I was searching for Emily, then the pagination adapts itself for the search term. Now instead of three pages, we have two pages, which is for the search term Emily, All right? So our pagination also adapts based on the search term. All right, so all in all, this is what we are going to build and this is going to be a pretty interesting and advanced project and I suggest you code along with me. So now, without any further ado, let's start building the project. Alright, so over here on the left, I have my VS Code editor opened and on the right, I have my browser opened up. So whatever I code over here is going to be rendered on the browser at the right side. So I have this initial project setup which has no content within it yet and this was created by Veet. At the moment, I don't have anything in the app.jsx file. So this is where we are going to start writing our code. But first of all, you can also see we have this app.css and app.jsx file. And in this app.css file, I just have this Google fonts imported. So this is nothing but playpen plus sans. So I imported this using the Google fonts website. And in the body, 
I just have a font family. Let me just close this file explorer. I just have this font family, a background color and a color of white so that the text that I add can have the color of white. All right, this is just a basic CSS setup and the app.jsx over here. So I can cut this main.jsx, which has nothing but this react.strict mode. And then actually over here, we can also remove the index.css because it's not required. All right, and then we can go to the app.jsx. So I can just cut this main.jsx from here to clean up our tab. So now, first of all, in the app.jsx, I want to import the data table component and we haven't created the data table component yet. So what I'll do is within the SRC, I'll create a file and I'll name this data table dot JSX, right? And I'll just initialize the arrow function layout of this functional component, right? So here we have this data table. We can actually remove this from here. And then I'm going to simply import this over here. Over here, I'm going to write data table and this is going to auto import itself. And you can see data table being rendered on the screen over here, all right? Because in the data table component, we have the data table text, all right? So we will be working with these three files, the app.jsx, the data table.jsx and the app.css, all right? So let me collapse the file explorer so that we can have more space to write our code. Now I'll go to my data table.jsx and over here, I'll first begin by creating the layout of the application, which is nothing but the entire table, basically the entire table and the inputs. All right. Basically, if you remember, we had these inputs, the button, another input here, a table and a pagination section. So let's create the layout of that over here. I'll remove this text. Then I'll give this div a class name of container, right? Then within the container, I'll have another div and this div will also have a class name of add container so basically in the entire container we'll have two divs first is the add container which is going to include all of these inputs and the second is this part over here which is going to include the search input table and pagination all right so that second part which is this part over here that is going to be included within this div all right and this div will have a class name of nothing but search table container cool so first let's add the styling for the add container which is going to be these inputs and this button over here what i'll do is i'll first create a div this will be nothing but i'll have a class name of info container all right info because this part over here is for the name gender and age which is the info input containers so the first div is going to be for the info container and the second section within the add container is going to be nothing but that add button itself so i'll create button i'll write add over here right and this will have a class name of add and let's add all the inputs as well within the info container so first i'll write input and then this input will have a type of text placeholder of name then name will be nothing but name all right and then we'll also have a value which we won't add yet we will add it soon though let me just keep this as an empty string for now and then this will also have an on change all right and i'll just keep the on change as an empty function for the moment all right so at the moment i'll just keep this as an empty function don't worry we'll update these two later on now i'll copy this input and i'll paste it two more times one and then two and the second input will have a placeholder of gender the name will also be gender and the value and on change will update later similarly for the third input this will have placeholder as age and its name property will also be age right so you can see we have three inputs over here and now with that done let's also create the table i'll go down here and first if you remember right above the table we have an input which is for the search filter so what i'll do is i'll actually copy this input from here i'll paste it here and then this will actually have a placeholder of search by name it doesn't need a name property and i'll also give this a class name of nothing but search input all right now after that right underneath the search input let's create the table so this will be a table tag and then right underneath the table i'll first create the t head tag this is nothing but the table header which is nothing but this part over here this part so within the table header we will first need a table row and in that row we will have some headings so basically i'll add the th tags which is for the table headings and here first heading will be name i'll copy this paste it three more times the second heading will be nothing but gender the third heading will be age and the last heading will be action all right 
then after the t head we can go ahead and create the table body now the table body is where all of this content is going to lie so here right now this will be dynamically populated so for the moment i'll just keep the content within the table body empty and then right after the table over here what i'll do is i'll create another div this div will be nothing but will have a class name of pagination all right so this is going to be the pagination section so now this is the basic layout of our html now before i populate the pagination which will be dynamic and the table body let's first style this out properly so that our initial application can look like this at least all right let's style everything out for that i'll go to my app.css and over here i'll begin writing the css code all right so first before i add any styles i'll go to the app.jsx and here i actually need to give this a class name of nothing but app and then here i'll select the dot app class and i'll give this a text align of center all right and then i'll select the dot container class which is the div which wraps all of this here i'll give this a display of flex flex direction of column align items of center then a padding of 5px and a gap of 10px all right then after that i'll add the styles for the add container class which is nothing but this entire part over here the top part so here i'll give this a display of flex and an align items of center and flex direction of column and a gap of 5px all right then i'll select the info container class which is these inputs over here the top inputs and to this i'll give it a display of flex then a flex wrap of wrap so that it does not overflow and whatever extra content is there it comes to the next line and then a justify content of center and a gap of 5px all right so this makes it responsive if you notice if i increase its width you can see it stays in one line if i decrease it it comes to the next line all right this input over here all right so it's good for responsiveness basically this flex wrap and then the next is to add the style for the button but i also need to give some common styles to the input and the buttons because the input and button look like the default html input and buttons which don't look so nice so what i'll do is over here i'll first select input I'll select the input of type text and the button and these two will share some common styles which is nothing but appearance of none so i'll remove all the default button and input styles so and then this will have an outline of none then a border of zero then a padding of 12 px and 20 px after that a margin of 8 px and zero and then a box sizing of border box then border radius of 5px and font family of nothing but play pen sans all right and then this will be nothing but cursive all right you can see it looks so much better now so after this i'll give some custom styles to the button itself over here i'll give this a font weight of 600 a padding of 10px and 15px and then a cursor of pointer all right then i'll actually select the dot add class which is for this button over here and here i'll give this a background color of nothing but light blue so 73 addf and then a color of white after that a font weight of 600 all right now with that done i'll actually give a style to the search input this will have a width of 200 px all right then i'll also style the search table container which is if you remember um this entire part the part which contains the input as well as this table so in the search table container simply give this a display of flex and a flex direction of column and a justify content of flex start all right that will make sure that all the letters and all stay at the starting of the div all right so after this uh, let me actually zoom out from the browser i guess i'm pretty zoomed in um let me keep this at 125 percent all right so now you can see things look better and then i'll actually style the table tag over here to the table i'll give this a border collapse and i'll collapse it so this will make sure that when i actually create the table the entire table will have one border over here so if i don't add border collapse collapse these will start having some gaps between them which won't look good 
all right now actually just to be able to visualize some of the content within the table body what i'll do is in this data table.jsx i'll hard code a row over here in the t body i'll hard code it for now and i'll remove it after i'm done with the styling so just to visually show you the styles getting applied when i proceed to add more of the css i want to be able to visually show you the row getting styled within the body so for now i'll just hard code one row within this body so i'll create table row and within this i'll create a table data element and here let's say i'll name this john and paste this two more times so it will be a male and the age will be let's say 23 all right now let's just style this part to make it look like an actual table all right and once i'm done with the styling i will remove this part and i'll add it dynamically using some logic in react all right so now i'll go to the app.css so now over here i'll select the table td element as well as the table th element this should be table th and to this i'll give it a border 1px solid of a whitish gray color all right and then i'll give this a padding of 8px and then a max width of 350px and then a ward wrap will be break ward so that none of the wards overflow from their container and if the ward exceeds in length then it will just go to the next line all right and one more thing i'll add i'll actually need to add another element in the data table.jsx to fill this part so here in the table body what i'll do is i'll create another td element and within this i'll create one button actually i'll create another button and this will be nothing but edit and this is going to be nothing but delete and this is going to have a class name of actions all right so just know that this entire part i'm going to remove after i'm done styling because i want to dynamically add this or basically i want to map through an array and then return all these elements right now just for styling purposes i'm keeping it like this hard coding it for now but then i'm going to if not remove i'm going to modify this structure by returning it from an array and don't worry you'll soon get to know what i'm talking about so in the app.css let's continue with the styles so i'll actually also give this a text align of left all right and then a color of white then after this i'm going to select the table td element and this will have a font size of 18 px then a font weight of 400 and then i'm going to select the table table row and then on hovering that i'm going to give this a background color which will be slightly darkish gray in color all right so now if i hover on this you can see we get this different color after that I'll select tr and th and to this i'll give it a min width of 100 px all right then i'll select the table and th and to this i'll give a padding top of 12 px then a padding bottom of also 12 px then a text align of left then a background color of nothing but green all right there you go you can see the background color of this has turned to green and then color of white and font weight of nothing but 600 all right and then after this i'll also add the tiles for the actions which is this part over here so here i'm going to give it a display of flex justify content of center and i'll give it some gap so a gap of 6px all right now this looks much better and then what i need to do is i need to give the edit and delete buttons a different color so what i'll do is i'll go to my data table.jsx so here for the edit button i'll give this a class name of edit and then here i'll give this a class name of delete then i'll go to my css over here for the edit I'm going to give this a background color of nothing but blue all right and then a color of white and i'll make all the text within it uppercase cool then similarly i'll copy this paste it here before the delete class the delete will have a background color of light coral let me remove this all right the light coral and the rest of the parts will remain the same so that's styled as well and then now i'm actually going to add some media queries so this is to improve the responsiveness of the entire application so media only screen and max width of 600 px so whenever the screen width goes below 600 px i'm going to select the tr and th I'm going to select its min width property and I'm going to give this unset and then I'll select the table TD element and this will have a font size of 14px. 
So just small minor tweaks and then to the actions as well i'll give this a flex wrap of wrap and a gap of 2px that when this width becomes too small this button can come right underneath this edit button instead of staying in one row because then it consumes too much space all right then to the button i'll give this a margin 3px top and bottom and zero left and right all right now after adding the media queries part to just check the responsiveness what i can do is you can actually inspect over here and let's say i increase the width of the browser and here you can see if i try to go any smaller than 600 px then we get our styles being applied all right and you can see this also goes to the next line all right so that works fine i can close the inspector and i'll increase the width of my code editor and then after this we have a few more styles remaining which is for the pagination but before i add that i'll first add some logic to the application now so i'll go to my data table.jsx and then over here let's add some logic to basically take the data from the input and then add all the data within this table and so on all right so now i'll start with the logic part so here first of all let's try to get whatever the user types in these inputs so basically let's try to add the add functionality first now before i do that i'll actually remove this hard-coded data because we have added the styling now so we don't need this data over here anymore so what i can do for now is within this table table body i can just comment this out for now all right because we need to add this dynamically now so i'll go up here and over here i'll create a state variable and i'll name it const form data set form data it will be nothing but a use state and it will be an object that will have three properties which is the name and then the gender and lastly the age all right so name gender and age because these three inputs resemble the name gender and age as well so after that and just know that these three properties will be initialized with an empty string because of course in the beginning we haven't typed anything so after that what i can do is i can copy this and then over here at these individual respective inputs i can actually first update the value over here to nothing but form data dot name similarly this will be form data dot gender and this will be nothing but form data dot age all right and then right over here i will create a function named const handle input change which will be an arrow function and over here i'll try to take in the respective inputs from here and update it in the form data so i'll first copy this and i'll pass that function right over here and same thing will be done for the other two inputs as well all right now with that done let's modify the handle input change function now so here i'll first pass the event listener which it automatically receives because it's passed on to the on change then over here i can simply write set form data and this will have nothing but i'll spread out all the form data values that were there and the individual particular value i'm trying to update so e dot target dot name and then this will be nothing but e dot target dot value all right so it's important to set the name properties of each of the individual input same as the property in the form data and only because of that we can update the form data state with a one liner like this because the e dot target dot name is going to refer to the respective inputs based on the name and it's going to update that particular value in the form data state and we're going to spread whatever remaining data that we had so for example if i had already filled in the name and gender but then i was filling up the age then in that case this dot 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 form data is always going to spread the name and gender and it's only going to update the age all right so with this we should have our name gender and age updated in the form data and just to check that out what i can do is right over here i can console.log the form data all right then i'll inspect this and then over here let's say I just type something so john and we can see john come up then if i type the gender it's a male this has been filled and then let's say i type the age let's say 23 you can see that has also been updated so our form data is being updated accordingly so now let's go ahead and add the add button functionality so that when i click on add all the information i had populated over here get combined and added over here in the table so for that first i will actually create another state and this will be named as nothing but data data and set data this will also be a use state and this will be initialized with an empty array all right i'll remove this console log from here so after that what i'll do is i'll actually create 
another arrow function here named handle add click this will be an arrow function and i'll copy this function and i'll actually pass it to the add button over here so i'll write on click and this will have the handle add click function all right on clicking add button this function is going to get invoked over here all i'm going to do first is i'm going to check if form data dot name has been filled and form data dot gender is also present and form data dot age is present as well only then i'll proceed to update the data all right i want to ensure all these three inputs are filled for me to be able to update the data when i click on the add button so over here i can write const new item this will be an object this object will have an id to make it unique so date dot now and then a name which will be nothing but the form data dot name and then a gender which is again the form data dot gender and then the age which is again form data dot age all right then after that over here i'll write set data and i will update this data over here with this new item so all i'll write is if there's any existing data present in the table already then simply spread it out and add the new data or the new item so that's going to be nothing but new item all right so this is basically just going to push in our new data or the new item all right and then after that i want to make sure that once we have clicked on add and our data has been updated i also want to clear the form input so whatever i must have typed in over here it should get cleared so i'll write set form data and i'll just empty the objects the name will become empty gender will also become empty and age will also become empty all right and since we have set the individual input values to the respective form data object property when i empty this these individual inputs are also going to get emptied out all right so now let's just test this for that let me first console.log nothing but the data then i'll inspect and open the console so over here i'll write john and then gender is male and age is 23 and then if i click on add there you go you can see the array has been populated and in the array you can see we have the id making sure that this object added is unique with the age gender and name property and if you noticed after clicking add this input also became empty similarly let's say let's try to add something else let's say miles and gender male age 15 if i click on add then we get two submissions populated within the array expand you can see in number one index one we have miles male and the age 15 with its unique identifier so our add button works perfectly fine let me close the console and remove the console log from here all right so now after this we want to be able to visibly see the data in this table so we have all the information we are trying to add in the data array right so what i can do is i can actually go over here to the table body the t body and over here i'll actually keep this here for now to see what i'm going to do so over here i'm going to write curly braces and then i'm going to map through the data array so data dot map and then for each item i'm actually going to return an element all right so over here i will actually copy this part and paste it here and of course i'll remove these curly braces and i'll uncomment this as well all right um, we are actually able to see john two times over here because we are mapping through the data which already has two elements and so it's looping through twice and just showing this hard-coded data twice we'll actually refresh this which will make sure that the data becomes an empty state and also over here you can see if i hover it says missing key prop over here i'll give this a key of nothing but item dot id which is nothing but the date dot now all right and here i can simply start updating these values so instead of john I'll make this nothing but item dot name. Similarly, this will be nothing but item dot gender, and this here will be item dot age. All right, and then I'm actually also going to give an ID to each of these TD elements. So over here, I'll give this an ID of nothing but item dot ID. I'll actually copy this. And I'll paste this here twice. Here, here, and yeah, that's it. So with this, we should at least be able to see whatever data we add in our table over here. Let's actually try to add some data. Let's say I write John, gender is male, age is 23 if I add, and voila, you can see our information gets added. Let's try to add some other name, so Miles, gender male, age 14 if I add, that also gets added perfectly fine. 
so our add functionality works fine now now after that let's go ahead and add the delete functionality all right so over here in the button i'll actually test the on click property and here i will actually pass this a function which will be named handle delete and this will take the argument item dot id right item dot id we are getting the item from here and we're accessing its id property which is the date dot now so let's create this function i'll go over here create handle delete will be an arrow function and we know this takes an id so what i'll do is i'll first write const updated list and all i'll do is i'll just filter through the data array so i'll filter for each item if item dot id is not equal to id then filter them out and add it in the updated list and if item dot id is actually equal to id then don't add it in the updated list the updated list will have all the other items which are not equal to item dot id so it will filter out the data that we try to delete all right then all i have to do is i just have to update the data with the updated list that's it now let's say if i try to delete miles and there you go miles got deleted if i do the same thing with john john is also deleted so our delete function also works fine now let's go ahead and add the edit functionality so i'll go down here to the edit part and in the edit i actually want to do something different so let's just add some random information over here first so in edit what i want to do is when i click this i want that there should be a cursor that comes up over here so on clicking edit a cursor should automatically come up over here indicating that this part is editable all right so to do that what i'll do first is i'll go here then i'll create another state named edit id and then set edit id then use state will be nothing but false all right so this edit id is nothing but you can consider this as an edit mode so if i click on edit button for a particular row then this edit id will be filled with with that item's id all right and that will indicate that edit id actually has an id so we are actually trying to edit that particular row all right so what i'll do is i'll go down here to the edit button and over here on click i will do something and that's going to be pretty simple i'm actually going to add a callback function and this will simply update the edit id state to nothing but the item dot id all right so now on clicking edit the edit id should have the particular id for the row i'm trying to edit all right now with that done i want to make sure that the row i'm trying to edit it gets a cursor on its row when i click on edit so to make sure that happens we have to actually utilize the content editable property so let me populate this again so the thing is when i click edit i want a cursor to come over here right and that can happen using the content editable property in javascript so basically to this td over here which has the item dot name i will add the property named content editable and this will store nothing but if edit id is equals to item dot id all right so if i click edit here then the edit id will be the id of this row and when we map through the data if a particular row's edit id is equal to the item dot id which in this case will be true if i click on this edit over here then the content editable for that td or table data will become true bringing out that cursor over here now before i show you that let me just copy this and i'll add the same thing over here as well and here too because we want to be able to edit all three of these columns right all right so now let's just test this out if i click on edit nothing happened right now but if i click here you can see we get the cursor so we can actually add values now even if i add values over here when i press away it's not going to update the value it's just going to update the dom so if i update this and i click away although the dom seems updated but the actual data array doesn't get updated all right so we have to make sure that we update the value so although it seems like we edited it it hasn't quite been edited yet all right so now basically whenever i click on edit the content editable for that particular row gets activated and we are actually able to update these values all right now let's make sure that we actually focus on this part you know when i actually click on edit because we don't want the user to figure it out on their own right that this is actually editable we want that when i click on edit the cursor should automatically come over here so to do that what i can do is i can go up over here over here and here and create a use effect right and this will take the edit id in its dependency 
and then first i can write if not edit id if edit id is false then simply return from here we don't need to do anything otherwise let selected item basically i'll select that particular row using the dom selector so document dot query selector and we can select that particular dom element through its id based on the id we have in the edit id over here so we can select that particular row the one that we're trying to edit by utilizing this edit id so what i'll do over here is i'll add the template literals and over here within the square brackets i'll write id equals and then i'll add the dollar sign and the curly brackets and over here i'll write edit id so by doing this we are actually selecting that particular row from the dom the particular row that we are trying to edit so once we get that oh my bad one thing i need to change is i need to add query selector all over here and this is going to return us a node list so upon doing query selector all for that particular edit id we are going to actually get a node list of all these items right all these three items because the edit id will be matching these item.ids so we will get a list of three items in the node list which are these three items and we want to make sure that we focus the first element when we click on edit so over here i'll simply write selected item dot focus i'm um, sorry selected item of zero dot focus because it's a node list right and we want to only focus the name column the moment we click on edit that will allow the user to know that yes the row is editable now and then they can proceed to select the other columns by their own will now let's just test that out i write john mail and then the h23 i click on add and now if i click on edit you see we get the cursor come up over here automatically i do not have to manually click it so this now allows the user to know that this row is editable so they can click over here and edit it and if i click here then i can also edit this or this but now as i said this actually seems like it's been edited but it's only been updated in the dom it's not updated in the data over here so we need to update it over here as well so we need to make sure that when i actually click outside this table then we need to make sure that our content gets edited so basically when i click outside it should automatically mean that our new data should be updated in the data array and the edit mode should also become off meaning that once i click outside i should not be able to click here and get the cursor so let's do all that so first to update the data array when we click outside what we can do is over here in the td in all of these three table data i can actually utilize another property named on blur all right so this on blur is going to get activated when i click anywhere outside all right on blur what i want to do is pass this e and then i'll actually call a function named handle edit and this will take two arguments first is the item.id and the second is an object that will contain nothing but the updated value so here i'll write name and then e dot target dot inner text right so because this is for the name column i'm passing an object with the name property and its value basically the updated value so i can basically copy this and i can paste this on blur property over here as well for the gender and instead of name here i can write this as gender and i'll do the same over here for age as well right this will be age now with that done let's actually create the handle edit function go up here and i'll write const handle edit and let's now create this function so over here first of all i can write if edit id is false or edit id is not equal to um if you can see over here i've actually not passed in the parameters so the parameters are going to be nothing but id and the updated data if you remember in the handle edit we pass the item.id as well as the updated data so and the updated data is an object do remember that so if there is no edit id which means if you have not clicked on the edit or the edit id is not equal to the id then in that case simply just return right there should be edit id all right in that case we don't need to do anything but otherwise what i can do is I can create a variable named updated list this will be nothing but data dot map i'll map through each of the elements in the data and then i can write a ternary operation over here saying if item dot id is actually equal to the id so if item dot id in the data is actually equal to the id that we have passed into the function if that's true then that means we have actually reached the item in the data array that we want to edit 
so if item dot id triple equals to id then simply return nothing but in the object we'll have the rest of the item and we'll add the updated data and then otherwise we'll just return the item so if you didn't understand what this means basically data dot map obviously returns a new array because map returns a new array so in that array for each element we are checking if the item dot id is equal to the id if it is then we'll actually update the row that we are trying to edit and in that row we will first spread out all the values of the item so basically first we'll spread out the original name gender and age and then we will specifically spread out what's in the updated data so when we were trying to update the name you remember the updated data is nothing but the object with name and then e dot target dot inner text so let's say if we actually only updated the name then all the items will be spread out so gender age and name will be spread out and then the name specifically will be updated to the e dot target dot inner text which is whatever we have typed in over here right and then for the rest of the elements in the data like for the rest of the indexes simply return the item so the new array returned by map will have one array updated which is the array that we are trying to edit and the rest of the items will be returned as it is all right then of course we just need to update the data the data state the so set data updated list all right and now let's say i console.log the data over here and then i refresh this then let's say i write john gender male age 23 and now let's say i'll inspect then over here let's say i click on edit and then let's say I update the john column over here let's say I add n multiple times and then i click away then if i go over here you can actually see that the name property in the data array has been updated to john john with multiple n's actually all right that means our edit or handle edit works perfectly fine all right now after this there's one thing you should know that although i have edited this and i clicked outside and the data was updated but you'll notice one thing if i still click here we still get the cursor so the ideal scenario would be once i've clicked outside outside the table then we should make sure that if i click over here the cursor shouldn't come up the cursor should only come when i click on edit again all right because that's the ideal scenario otherwise the edit mode will always be on and the user can come and edit anytime that won't be so nice then the edit button becomes useless so we want to make sure that whenever i click outside the edit id should become false and the user would have to click on edit again to be able to edit anything all right so on clicking outside over here we should make the content editable false i'll first remove this console log and then i will actually go up here and here i'll create another use effect all right and then this use effect will have an empty array as its dependency and then here i'll actually add document dot add event listener and i'll listen to the click event and i'll call the function handle click outside all right and then i'll actually create this function right over here so const handle outside click all right and before i actually write the logic of this function i first need to utilize the use ref hook because i want to make sure that i add a reference to this table over here so that i can detect whether i'm clicking on this table or outside this table so i'll write const outside click equals use ref and then this will be initialized with false then i'll actually copy this outside click and i'll go down here and i'll give the table a ref of nothing but outside click all right so this will help us detect whether we are clicking on the table or not so just to show you that what i'll do is over here in the handle outside click function i will actually take the event because this is passed in the document dot add event listener so this automatically takes the event and then here i can write if so if outside click dot current so you know that in refs in react to access its values we have to use the dot current all right so this outside click dot current is going to include nothing but the table over here because the ref was added to that table right so if outside click dot current exists and the outside click dot current dot contains so if the outside click dot current does not contain you see because of this if it does not contain the event dot target then that means we clicked somewhere else right so if the outside click dot current the outside click is nothing but this table over here so if it does not contain the event dot target which means i clicked somewhere else because if i clicked here it would include that event dot target in the current of the outside click ref but if i click somewhere else then the outside click dot current would not have that event because i clicked somewhere else and not on the table where the ref was placed so if that's the case then 
I just want to set the edit ID as false. All right. And then I also want to make sure that over here in the cleanup of the use effect, I actually remove the event listener. So document dot remove event listener for the click event. I will remove the handle click outside function. Right. So I saved this. That's why the data went away. I'll just remove the empty spaces from here. All right. And now let's see if our code works. Let me first populate the data. So this will be mail and then 23. And I click on add. And now what should happen is if I click on edit, this should focus on as it was. But then when I click somewhere outside and I click on this again, we should not be able to edit this, right? So in the beginning, I'm not able to do anything because I haven't actually clicked on edit. If I click on edit, we get the cursor here. But now let's say I click somewhere outside. This should set the edit ID as false or the edit mode as false. And now if I click over here, we should not get the cursor and voila, you see, we do not get the cursor. So to get the cursor again, the user has to click on the edit button again. All right, allowing them to edit again. All right, and if I click anywhere outside, and then if I click here, then the edit mode becomes false or the edit ID becomes false. So we don't get to edit again until we click on edit of that particular row all over again. All right, so that works perfectly fine as well. So our edit functionality has been completed too. Now let's move on to the next part, which is adding the search functionality. So over here, I'll first scroll down. I'll go right here to the search input. And here we need to update the on change and the value of the search input. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go up here and here I'll create a state, basically a state variable for the search term. So search term set search term. This will be nothing but a use state and it will be initialized with an empty string. All right. And you can say right over here, I will also create another function named const handle search. This will also be an arrow function. All right. So the first thing we need to do is I'll go to the search input and over here in the search input value, I'll pass the search term state. And we need to make sure that the search term state gets updated with whatever we type over here. So to do that, over here in its on change, I will call the handle search, all right? And then I'll go up to my handle search function and handle search will of course receive an event. And then within this function, I'll simply update the search term. So set search term will be nothing but e dot target dot value. All right. With this, our search term state should have whatever we type over here in the input. Now we need to make sure that based on whatever we are searching here, we need to filter that data out from the data array over here. And then we need to display it over here in the table body. So basically whatever I type over here, we need to first check if what I've typed over here is present within the data and all of the objects within the data that contain the name that's typed over here, we are going to filter that out to a new variable and then display it over here in the table body, right? So pretty simple. So what I'll do first is I'll go right over here. And here I'll create a variable, let's say filter data. And over here, I will simply filter out the data state. So data.filter and then the item. All right, for each item, I want to return nothing but item.name dot to lowercase. All right, then dot includes. And we want to check if the item includes whatever that's present in the search term. So search term dot to lowercase. All right. So whenever I type something over here in the search by name, the data is going to get filtered out and it's going to get filtered out in a manner wherein their name property includes the search term, then those specific objects will be returned from this data.filter and it will be added to the filtered data. So every object in the data where the search term that we have typed over here is included in the item.name, those specific objects are going to be added to the filtered data. The filtered data is going to contain the data that we are searching for. And that's why to actually be able to view this, what I'll do is right now, I'll actually first copy this, the filter data. And right now, if I go down here to the table body, you will notice that I'm doing data.map. So what I can do is instead of data.map, I can actually paste filter data.map over here. And this will make sure that whatever I type in the search by name is going to filter the data and add it to the filter data variable, which we are mapping through over here. And that filter data is going to be visible over here. And if I empty the search input, then the filter data automatically becomes equal to the data state. All right, because item.name.to lowercase will always include search term dot lowercase if the search term itself is nothing, because every name will always include an empty string. 
And basically if the search term over here is empty, then every item in the data array will satisfy this condition. Because the search term itself is empty, so there's nothing as such to compare, it will always be included in the item.name. And that's why we don't need to write something like over here in the T body, we don't need to write data or filtered data depending on whether the search term is input or not. We can directly just place the filtered data because the filtered data will automatically include all the data every time the search term is empty. Now just to test that out, what I'll do is let's say I type a few different names. Let's say here I type John and gender is male, age is 23 and then I type Miles, gender male, age 21. And then let's say I type another name, I write Emily, gender female, age 21. Now let's try to search this. Let's say I search for Emily and you can see we only get Emily over here. And if I backspace this, we get the rest of the data, All right? Basically the entire data that was there initially, All right? And if I search for John and we get John and if I search for Miles, we get Miles. And if I search for something random, then it's not present in our data, all right? So our search filter also works fine now. But after this, the last thing that we need to do is we need to add the pagination. All right. So to add the pagination, what I can do is right over here, I will need to create some variables. So in pagination, what we want to do is we want to display five items per page at max. All right. So let's say if there are 10 items then we want to create two pages, the first page will contain five and the second page will contain the rest of the five items. All right. So based on that, let's code this out. First, I'll create a variable named items per page, which will be nothing but five. All right. And then we need to add a state over here named current page. And this will be set current page. And this will be a state. And it will be initialized with the value one because initially we will always be in the first page. All right. Now, basically, by combining the items per page and the current page, we can get the index of last item of that current page that we are on. So basically, if I write index of last item, well, now just consider this. This should be index. Now, let's say we have 10 items and we know that we want five items per page. So there's going to be two pages, right? Five items in each. So let's say we are in the first page. So we are being displayed the first five items and the index of the last item of the page we are on, which is the first page, is going to be nothing but current page into the items per page, right? Because the current page when we are on page one is one into items per page, which is five, is nothing but one into five, which is five, right? So when we are in the first page, the index of last item is five, right? It's the fifth element. And we are not considering index from zero when we write index of last item, all right? You can also name this as number of last item or just something like last item. All right, so the index of last item for the first page is going to be nothing but one into five, which is the current page into items per page, which is one into five, that's five. And that makes sense, right? And let's say if we were on the second page, so the index of last item would be nothing but 10 because two into five would be 10. And since if we have two pages, there would be 10 elements. So the index of last item would actually be 10. All right. And remember, we are not starting index by zero over here. This is just the number. You can, if you want, name this as last item number or something like that, or just the last item as well. All right. So this is going to be nothing but current page into items per page. All right. Basic math. And then next, what we can write is index of first item. All right. So now we need to take out the index of first item. Because to page in it, we actually do require the last item and the index of first item. And then we want to splice that from the filtered data. All right. You'll see that soon. Don't worry. But let's get the index of the first item of the page we are on. To do that, we can utilize this last item, last item minus, of course, the items per page. All right. So let's say if we are on page one, then we know that the last item is going to be nothing but five, right? Because current page one into five is five. The last item is five minus the items per page. Five minus five is zero, which gives us the index of first item for the first page. All right. Pretty self-explanatory. The index of first item for the first page is going to start from zero. Index of first item for the second page is going to start from five. All right. Here, the index is going to start from zero. That's why we have named this index of first item. All right. So in the first page, we will have zero, one, two, three, four, which is five elements or five items. And in the second page, we're going to have five, six, seven, eight, and nine, which is the next set of five elements. In total, it's going to be 10 elements because we have started from the index zero. All right. And then now what I'll do is in the filter data over here, I will actually slice this. So I'll write dot slice. And then I'll slice from the index of first item to the last item. All right. 
So when we are on page one, this is going to give me the first five items. Basically, the filter data is going to slice the first five items and keep the first five items in its array. But then when we go to the second page, these values are going to change and it's going to slice and give us the next set of five items. All right. Now to be able to visually see this, let's try to add the pagination down here. So I'll go down in the UI and over here in the div with the class of pagination, what I'll do is we need to display the numbers, right? Whether one, two, three, four, five, depending on how many items we have. So what I can do is I can write over here in curly braces array dot from and then here if you didn't know in the array dot from I can add the first argument as something where I can specify the length of the array so in array dot from you know that we can create an array from something right so here I want to map the buttons one two three four five and so on based on the total number of filtered items I have so in the array dot from we can actually specify a length property the length like this and based on that it's going to give us an array of that much length and we can then iterate through that array and for each of those items we can return a button so how many buttons would we require basically the paginated buttons well that would depend on the length of the total data right so just to show you what i mean i'll write data dot length and you know that data array contains the list of all the data that has been added in the table so data dot length and the data isn't being sliced the filtered data is getting sliced but the data isn't so data dot length divided by the items per page that is how many pages we would require so let's say we had 20 items in the data and the items per page we want to display is 5 right so 20 by 5 would be 4 so we would require 4 pages so then we can map through this array of length 4 and we can display 4 buttons got it pretty simple right all right and if you didn't know the array dot from also takes another argument which is nothing but a callback over here you can write something like this and this will take Nothing but underscore and the index because i'm not going to utilize this i've just named this as underscore but array.from also gives us the index so i'll utilize that index and then for each of the element in the array i will actually return a button and then this button will have a key of nothing but index plus one and it will display the information of nothing but index plus one because index starts from zero so zero plus one would be one so the buttons would start from one two three four and so on so if we had 20 items in the data array then 20 by 5 would be four and this would loop through the array dot from and display four buttons so one two three and four if i save this all right now after saving it let's just test this out so i'll quickly push some data over here and then we can test the pagination part Well now over here you can see we get the pagination value 1 over here because in this page we have 5 items but actually I added around 7 to 8 items. I don't remember how much but I actually added 7 to 8 items but we are not getting the page number 2 and that's because over here in the length I forgot to specify math.seal because without that when we have 7 or 8 items this becomes a decimal and that causes an issue. So if I write math.seal then now you can see we get 2 pages. All right so now with the elements added we can actually see page one and page two because in the page two also i have around two to three items in total i had added seven to eight items that's why so our pagination works fine but how do we actually go to the page two like right now we're only able to see the contents of page one to be able to go to page two what i can do is over here in the button i can actually specify an on click all right and this on click is actually going to call a function called paginate and it's going to take the value index plus one basically the button that i've clicked its number it's going to take its number all right then i'm going to go up here and i'm going to create that function const paginate this will be an arrow function and this takes the parameter page number which was nothing but the index plus one and over here all we need to do is we can write set current page nothing but the page number all right and now with that done if I go down here and then if I actually click on 2, you can see we actually changed the page and we got to see the rest of the data. And if I click on 1, we go to page 1. If I click on 2, we go to page 2. That works perfectly fine now. But we also want to show the user which page they are on. So to do that, we want to be able to highlight the page that we are on. To do that, over here in the button itself, I will actually write style equals I'll select the background color property background color and then here if current page is equal to the index plus one then just make the background 
light green right now as you can see whenever we click on a particular button the current page state gets updated to that button right to that index so if that current page is equal to the index plus one which is nothing but that value which was set in the current page itself so if that's true then turn the background light green and you can see now because i'm in the first page the background is light green and if i click on page two the page two button becomes light green so we are also able to see which page we are on all right now let's actually add some gap over here some styling to do that i'll go to my app.css and over here i'll actually select the dot pagination class so pagination and then i'll give this a display of flex a gap of 5px and a justify content of center all right there you go then with this working we actually need to make sure of a few more things so basically if i go to page number two you'll notice something so if i delete this element this gets deleted but now if i delete the last element of page two you see that the page two goes away but we don't go back to page one we stay in page two and it just becomes empty so here we want to make sure that if we are on any different page basically on any page other than one basically two or three and if there's only one item remaining over there and we click on delete then we need to make sure that we go to the previous page all right we don't want to just get stuck on that page so all right we don't just want to get stuck on that page all right so what i'll do is i'll go up here and then in the handle delete what i'll do is i'll write if filter data dot length if that's equal to one so while we were on this page when there was only one data remaining so if the filter data dot length is one and the current page is not equal to one because we were on page two so if the current page is not equal to one then we want to make sure that we actually decrement the page number so so set current page going to be nothing but previous previous minus one all right now with this let me just add some data over here so i'll add some random data all right so page two has one item we can navigate between page one and page two now if in page two i delete this item then you saw that page two got removed and we came back to the previous page which is the page number one all right now this is a much better user experience so that works fine as well now there's actually one last thing remaining and to show you that what i'll do is i'll first add six items with the same name so let me just quickly do that i'll add the name hello let's say six times all right so i'll just quickly fast forward this part all right so now what i did is i added this same name hello six times so you can see in page two we have it five times and in page three we have it once now the reason why i did this is i want to show you a minor bug all right so let's say i am in page one or any page basically and here i try to search for the hello word i search hello now i have searched for hello which we know we have added only six times but when i search for hello we get in the pagination we get three pages which isn't fine because we now want to paginate based on the filtered items not on the entire data length all right when we had nothing in the filter we were filtering through the entire data length all right because when i did not have anything over here in the search input at that time the pagination was being decided based on the entire data length so if i go down here you can see the length is determined on the data dot length and that's why when i actually search for hello which occurs six times we still get three pages because the pagination is structured based on data length data dot length divided by items per page but we want to make sure that in this case when we write hello and there are only six items then we only get two pages basically the desired number of pages based on how much ever results we get for the particular search term so if i actually go to page two here you can see we get hello once and in page three we have nothing we should only show two pages we should not show three pages all right so to fix that we should not create these paginated numbers based on the data dot length divided by items per page instead we need to actually do it based on how much ever results we get after we type something on the search input and the data gets filtered so basically if i go up here then upon data dot filter whatever result we get that's the total number of hello items we have right so we need to make sure that we extract this part and we get its length out and based on that we can create the pagination over here all right we do not want to take this entire part because this filtered data also has only the sliced portion of the entire data dot filter because this is being paginated right this is ensuring that we only show five items per page so if i actually try to get the entire length of this it's only going to give us five all the time which would be incorrect because then the pagination would always show page one right but we want to show 
page number depending on whatever the data dot filter returns all right in that case it's going to actually account the entire six items for whatever search input we type for basically six items in this case six hellos and it's going to give us two pages if we put it in the pagination array dot from length down below so to show you what i mean what i'll do over here is i'll create a variable named let filtered items equals and this is going to be nothing but i'll just copy this part i'll actually cut it from here paste it here and that same part which i just cut out i'll paste that back here again right so this filtered items was nothing but this part itself right we just brought it out to this variable over here and then to that same variable we are slicing it and the filtered data is going to remain as it is but the advantage we get from this is we actually get the raw filtered items and with this we can actually extract the length of the filtered items and use that in the pagination below and it's going to give us the actual length of the filter items which is six in this case to show you what i mean i'll copy that go down here and instead of data.length i'll paste filtered items i'll save the project and now you can see we get two pages instead of three so if i go to page two we have only one item so now the pagination also works when we try to search and filter out items so the pagination works in normal cases when we don't search for anything and it also works for when we try to filter out something or when we try to search something to show you that again you see now i'm not searching for anything so we have three pages all right but if i try to search for hello then we get the pagination restructured based on the search term so two pages this time all right and filter items dot length works perfectly fine over here because in the event we don't have anything in the search input the filter items becomes nothing but the data array itself all right because that's how we have set the condition to work over here i go up here that's how this part works when there is nothing in the search term the data just filters out everything in the filtered items so the filtered items becomes the same as the data array all right now with that done there's actually one very small edge case remaining where let's say i go to page number two all right first remember that i have this name john in my table and let's say i go to page number two but now in page two i search for john and you see when i do that i do not get anything over here but we know that john was there in page one and when we search for something over here we are actually searching throughout the entire table so we should have gotten the john item visible over here but we did not well that's because the current page hasn't been reset the current page is still at two so the filtered data shows us the list of items based on the second page and in the second page there is no john so it gets confused so we need to make sure that over here in the use effect i'll make sure that every time the search term is getting updated so basically every time we type something over here set the current page to nothing but one all right because if you're searching for something then we don't want to start our searching operation from the current page that we're on no we want to start that search from the beginning of the page so that's why every time i search for something default the current page to one and start our search from there and now let's say i'll populate some values over here i'll quickly fast forward this part all right so here i have added some random values and now john is again there and if i go to page two and from here if i try to search for john then this time you can see we actually do get john as an item over here even though we were on a different page because the page number got reset and we were able to search through the entire table all right so this works perfectly fine as well all right so now with that done we are actually done with our project um and over here if you can see my auto imports imported this from react part thrice well we actually don't need to write these two lines we can put both of these right over here and i can remove these two lines right just some minor cleanups all right so with that done let's just quickly test everything out i'll refresh the page and here let's say i type some names let's say i type on john gender will be m age 12 so the add part works fine and let's say i'll quickly fast forward and add some more elements all right so here i have added a few more elements and you can see we get two pages over here so our pagination also works fine i can switch between different pages and if i want i can edit a particular element and if i click outside it gets edited and i again cannot click here and re-edit it until i click on the edit button again all right so we can also go to the next page and let's say i try to delete this element here that gets deleted so our delete also works fine and let's say i try to search for john and we get john over here i can backspace and if i go to page two 
and let's say i delete these two elements then we go back to page one that also works fine basically everything in this project now works fine we are able to create read update delete filter out stuff and also paginate all our data so that's all for this project if you found it insightful don't forget to like share and subscribe